Around 40,000 years ago, Europe was a land gripped by icy winds and endless winters. In this unforgiving world, a new kind of human emerged, the Cro-Magnons. Far from merely surviving, these early Homo sapiens carved out their place in a hostile landscape, not as victims of their environment, but as pioneers. Towering at around 1.70 meters, they moved through the frozen wilderness with strong, resilient bodies built for endurance. But their legacy is about more than just physical strength. The Cro-Magnons seemed to have an almost mystical connection with the land they called home, shaping their world in ways that went beyond the struggle for survival. They hunted, yes, but they also created. Their story is not just one of survival, but of innovation, art, and a profound relationship with the forces of nature. The Cro-Magnons weren't just average hunters. Sure, they relied on hunting and gathering like many before them, but they mastered these skills with finely crafted tools. They didn't just chase down their prey, they perfected the art of it. Armed with spear throwers, they went after massive creatures like mammoths with precision. But it wasn't just about weapons. They used everything the land gave them. They utilized mammoth bones, hides, and wood to build shelters that could withstand the unforgiving cold. It wasn't just brute strength, it was ingenuity. What's really intriguing, though, is that these Cro-Magnons weren't just concerned with surviving day-to-day -day life. They left behind something remarkable art. In caves like Lascaux and Chauvet, their paintings of animals and hunting scenes still catch our attention today. What drove them to create these works? Was it a way to express themselves or perhaps something spiritual? It's hard to say for sure, but one thing is clear, they wanted to leave something behind that outlasted their footprints in the snow. The Cro-Magnons weren't alone either. They lived alongside Neanderthals, and we know that the two groups mixed at least genetically. But while the Neanderthals eventually disappeared, the Cro-Magnons did not. Why was it because they were more adaptable? Did their social systems give them an edge? Or was it just luck? We may never know for certain, but they carved out their place in history nonetheless. Today, when we uncover their tools or admire their cave paintings, we find traces of their lives, and remarkably, we even carry a piece of them in our genes. It's amazing to think that in a world so vastly different from ours, they manage not just to survive, but to create a culture that still resonates. The Cro-Magnons were tall and strongly built. The men averaged between 1.70 meters and 1.80 meters in height, which was quite large for their time. Their robust, muscular bodies helped them survive the harsh climatic conditions of the Ice Age. These powerful physiques were built for endurance and strength, allowing them to run long distances and carry heavy loads necessary for hunting and daily life. Their broad shoulders and strong limbs enabled them to meet the physical demands of hunting and surviving in tough environments. They had broad faces with prominent chins and straight foreheads. Unlike the heavy brow ridges of the Neanderthals, they also had large rectangular eye sockets, which suggests that they had well-developed vision essential for hunting across the vast landscapes they roamed. The brains of Cro-Magnons were larger than those of modern humans, with a volume of around 1,600 to 1,700 cubic centimeters. Experts believe this larger brain volume indicated high cognitive abilities. As Cro-Magnons spread further north, it is believed they developed relatively lighter skin to better synthesize vitamin D from the lower levels of sunlight. Genetic studies suggest that they may have had light skin and possibly even light eyes, as indicated by DNA analyses from Cro-Magnon remains found in Italy. Like modern humans, Cro-Magnons lived in small, close-knit groups, likely in the form of families or clans. This social structure was essential for surviving the harsh conditions, these relentless conditions of their natural environment. They worked together on all the tasks necessary to withstand life in the wilderness. They hunted together gathered food, and built their shelters as a team. This teamwork was key to their survival, and each member of the group likely had a specific role depending on their abilities. Some hunted, while others gathered firewood, prepared food, or cared for children. Since the Cro-Magnon primarily hunted large animals such as mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses, this cooperation was crucial. Hunting such massive creatures required not only courage, but also careful planning and coordinated action. A lot could go wrong, which meant the members of the group had to trust each other completely. After a successful hunt, the meat was shared with the entire group, ensuring the survival of everyone. 
Their shelters had to be incredibly sturdy to withstand the extreme weather conditions of the Ice Age. They built their huts from whatever they had on hand, mostly mammoth bones, animal skins, and wood. These dwellings protected them from the icy temperatures and strong winds. The shelters were often built in protected areas like caves or under rock overhangs. The Cro-Magnons were known for their intelligence and adaptability. They were able to make full use of all their resources, wasting nothing. Every part of the hunted animal had a purpose. While the meat was used for food, the bones were crafted into tools and weapons, and the skins provided warmth. Mammoth bones were not only used for tools, but also for constructing tents or stable shelters. The Cro-Magnon tools were not only practical, but also highly sophisticated. They were nearly the masters of tool making. Their spear throwers and harpoons greatly enhanced their hunting abilities, allowing them to target prey from a safe distance. They also developed specialized techniques when crafting their instruments, using different tools for tasks like cutting, hunting, and preparing food. Quick pause. If you're enjoying this journey through the prehistoric world, don't forget to like and subscribe. More than 97% of our viewers watch without subscribing, and we'd love to have you join our tribe. It would make all the difference. So, is it done great? Thanks, the ever-changing climate conditions of the Ice Age required a great deal of flexibility, but the Cro-Magnons were masters of adaptation. They learned to make the most of their surroundings developing new hunting techniques and utilizing various materials to improve their living conditions. They were also semi-nomadic, meaning they moved according to the seasons and the availability of food and resources. This mobility helped them survive in different climates and landscapes. But perhaps the most remarkable remnants of the Cro-Magnon era are the cave paintings discovered in caves like Lascaux and Chauvet. These artworks give us a fascinating glimpse into the past of our ancestors. The paintings often depict the animals they hunted, as well as symbolic and abstract forms, which may have had spiritual or ritual significance. To this day, the exact reasons why the crow magnon painted remains unclear. It could have been a part of rituals, a form of communication, or simply artistic expression. Some researchers believe they had a spiritual connection with the animals and their environment, and the paintings were a way to express this relationship. The depictions in the caves often show animals in what appears to be veneration or a ritual context, suggesting a deep connection to their surroundings. It is believed that the Cro-Magnons may have developed their social relationships based on rituals, stories, and spiritual beliefs. They also had unique burial rituals. Some findings suggest that Cro-Magnons buried their dead with care, often adorned with grave goods like shells, tools, or jewelry. Experts believe this indicates a belief in an afterlife. Their artworks are some of the oldest known forms of human expression and show that even in extreme conditions, they found ways to connect with their world. Environments where humans sought more than just survival, they sought meaning, expression, and connection. For a long time, the Cro-Magnons coexisted with Neanderthals in Europe. It has been proven that interactions between the two groups occurred, including genetic mixing, as confirmed by DNA studies. But why did the Neanderthals eventually disappear? Possible reasons could be the Cro-Magnon's greater flexibility, their more advanced social structures, or simply their adaptability. While the exact cause of the Neanderthals' extinction remains unclear, it is possible that the Cro-Magnon's outcompeted them in resource use and survival in a changing climate. Even today, many people still carry traces of Cro-Magnon DNA. This means that parts of their genes continue to live on in us today. The genetic mixing between Cro-Magnons and other groups, such as the Neanderthals, has shaped our current genetic diversity. Many of the technological advancements that the Cro-Magnons developed laid the foundation for future generations. Their tools and hunting methods were used and refined over thousands of years. They left behind a cultural legacy that influenced later human groups. Their artwork and rituals may have been precursors to the religious and social structures that developed in early civilizations. In this way, the Cro-Magnons laid the groundwork for our modern civilization. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel.